Welcome to Keto on the Couch with Rachel and Joe, episode 54. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 100 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos, we do product reviews, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is TwoCrazyKetos.com. That's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah, so it is a beautiful Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and it's kind of weird that we are home, but we decided that it's such a gorgeous day. Let's do keto on the couch outside on the patio. It has been such a great week, but an upside down week. It feels like so much has changed that even just saying our little routine opening monologue felt good because it was the same. Yeah. <laughs> There's something out there that I can count on that is the same. Yeah, it, it has definitely been a weird week and, uh, and really a weird weekend. I think the weekend has been more like weird and stressful because we're completely out of our routine. I had no lacrosse games yesterday. We had no church last night. Uh, church today, again, was all online and last night. Yeah. And we spent this entire week, um, both us trying to figure out how to function from home and our church trying to figure out how do you do online church, not only for main service, but for us, like how do we give kids something? While simultaneously losing 50% of our income. Yes. So, yeah. So, I've lost all of my lacrosse games, which is a significant amount of money for the next, you know, what should have been two months. Um, we've got customers who are saying, hey, I need you to not cut my grass right now because I've, my income was gone down. Right. I've lost my job. I've been laid off. And so, there's all of this going on and we're like, well, what do we do? And so... We're continuing to be busy. It's just a different kind of busy. And, you know, we've talked a lot about trusting God and knowing, like, he's our provision. And we have an opportunity right now to, to really put that feet to our faith, right? Yes. I mean, so I, I just... I'm excited about the good things that are going to come out of even this stressful time because yeah. I am seeing communities rally all across the country and really all across the world in response to how do we do life moving forward? Yeah. And it's it's been fun. You know, it's been very busy. It's been very hectic, a little stressful. But something good that's come out of this is the fact that in just four days, we created an entire kids ministry website for the kids at Coastal. And we've been able to put up devotions that Rachel has been writing for two years going, why have I been writing why these? Why am I writing this? And they're all up there. We've been coming up with activities for kids to do with their parents while they're at home. I had to figure out and was able to successfully get up on the website what the lessons are. We got Anthony and his girlfriend to film teaching for the elementary kids. So out of all of this hecticness, some good has come because now kids from here on are gonna have an online resource to get kids ministry at home for days where maybe they can't get to church because they're sick or something yeah, like that. Or there's a storm or anything, yeah. And it's, I love how it's not just for our kids, but it's for kids all, you know, anywhere, because you can take the internet with you anywhere. So just because you're not in South Florida doesn't mean that you can't utilize, you know, what's available. And we're going to continue doing like devotions every morning and also at two o'clock, like a boredom busting craft activity for kids. Yeah, that, those are really cool. They're just like activities and you don't even have to be, you know, religious or church going or anything like that. These, some of these are just activities that kids would really enjoy doing fun things to do with kids. Because parents now, a lot of parents for the first time are working from home and having to be responsible for their kids, you know, day-to-day -day activities like all day long. So now you've got 24 full hours together as a family. How do you fill all that time? Because yeah, a minute can seem like a year sometimes. Yeah. Let us know down in the comment section, what are you guys doing to kind of maintain your time? Has your schedule changed? Are you are you like working from home now? Are you still being able to go to work? Because so many places down here, I mean, I feel bad for like restaurant workers, like restaurants are closing down or at least shifting to like delivery only. And I even noticed like 
Um, I got a message from Best Buy. Best Buy now, you can no longer shop in the store. You wow. can buy online or you can drive up to the front door and an employee will come out and say, what do you want? They'll go in the store, they will get it and then bring it out to you. But there is no shopping in the store at all. Just amazing. So there's a lot of people that like their whole life is in upheaval and what to do. I do want to say since we're out here, this week, because we've been like able to be home a little bit more, we got a lot done. One of the things we did was we cleaned Grayson's cage, but he's molting. So I decided, hey, I'm going to leave him out here on the patio feathers for a few days. everywhere. Because there's feathers everywhere. So he is sitting up there, so he may come visit us. Um, because the weather is so gorgeous, Charity's been wanting to just hang out on this couch. And now Tabitha is running around. Running She's chasing around. lizards. She may bring Rachel, Rachel a lizard right now. I really hope she does not. So we may get a visitor while we're sitting here on the couch from one of our animals. The only one that's not out here is Roscoe. I have to ask you, what are you drinking with my pink lid? This is a keto iced coffee. So it is just coffee on ice with one serving of the Kaitu gingerbread coffee creamer i gotta try that and my voice sounds a little wonky yes it's a combination of rachel's not sick i'm not sick but taping so much stuff and really utilizing my voice and also deep cleaning because since i've i'm home we're we're spring cleaning for sure yeah so rachel every day has been cleaning not again worried about a virus or anything like that. It's just that we're Spending always more time at home. so busy. We never have time to get into the deep cleaning in the house. Now I have no excuse. And uh, so she's been like cleaning all the house, cleaning the kitchen, cleaning the bathrooms, and she's overdoing it just a little bit on the cleaner. So it I need you to cut back because I need you to protect your voice and stuff. It wasn't dust bunnies under our bed. It was like dust velociraptors <laughs> under our bed. It was bad. So we've been filming a lot of videos, not so much for Too Crazy. We got a few for Too Crazy Ketos. Yeah. But it's been trying to get a week or two weeks worth of content up for church because every day at two o'clock we're releasing craft videos and things like that. But now that I've kind of gotten caught up on all of that editing, uh, we're going to be zone. doing a bunch of stuff for Two Crazy Ketos. And Rachel's going to try to pop in live once in a while. So am I. In fact, you popped in live on our Facebook yes, group today. Yes, thank you, guys. You, they picked out my earrings for today. And I think they I think they chose right. And really so make do. sure that you are subscribed to us, not only uh, on our Facebook, that you like that page. And you remember our Facebook family group. There's a link down below. But also make sure you hit up the notifications on YouTube. First of all, that helps our channel grow. Yeah. But also we're planning on, since we're going to be around a lot more, just popping in throughout the day once in a while with a live video. And if you have the notifications like tuned on, you'll know that we're online because we're not going to like pre-schedule or anything like that. It's just going to show up that, hey, Joe and Rachel are live. Let's do this. So I did want to say, so we also do live streaming every single week at on Thursdays at 9.30, which we're talking about moving up to 8.30. Eastern Standard Time. Let us know down in the comments section, is 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time better or do, would you prefer us to leave it at 9.30? Personally, I'd like to move it up to 8.30 because since there's no lacrosse right now, I'm home. It's a little bit earlier for us. Because we're old. But we want to go by what the mask is, like what would help you guys. Yeah. Also, we're talking about doing another fast soon. So yes. we're trying to figure out when to do that. So let us know how many people would be interested in doing a Probably fast. Probably mid-April. Yeah, sometime in April, beginning to mid-April, we'll do another like 48 to 72 hour fast. And I think it's important for us to stay connected as a keto community especially when a lot of our meetups have been canceled yeah, most or postponed. Of the, yeah, I know Keto Salt Lake has been canceled and they're trying to reschedule it for another time. Uh, KetoCon is still on the fence, but it's not looking good. No. It, it is It is looking like they're probably going to have to reschedule. So that's why we feel like more than ever, now is the time to be active on Facebook, active on social media, stay together as a group. You know, we would really, we were really looking forward to getting together with all of you guys at Salt Lake and KetoCon. So we're kind of bummed about that. I'm very bummed, but but here's the thing: why I think it's so important for us to stay connected to each other is one area that can spiral when there's any time time of stress or change is your diet, is your eating plan. A lot of times, 
you may have it all together for two, three years, be doing everything great. And then when you have a, a spiraling, you know, a, a time of stress or real upheaval, a change in your job or anything like that, you can revert back to old behaviors that maybe you thought that you had worked out of your life. Yeah, it's so, going on for me right now. So this is three years on keto. I've done really well, but being out of my element right now where I'm finding myself at the church offices working on stuff mm -hmm. with some of our tech team and filming you and Miss Caitlin and being at home a lot more for editing purposes and not having as much cutting and not having lacrosse, I'm finding that I'm grazing a little bit. Yeah. And some of the grazing is good. Some of it, like, where what I say by good is I'm grazing towards the refrigerator and be like, no, 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 you don't want that. But there's been a lot of slip ups. The only thing that's been good about it is I, I recognized it pretty quickly. And my grazing started off with nuts and pieces of keto granola because we have like the high key granola which is right. like awesome so and tasty. the one from um keto granola so like reaching my hand in there and cheese lots of cheese i made the mistake of going to costco and sam's club one day because i wanted to make keto lasagna mm -hmm. and they had the packages of slices of provolone swiss and cheddar cheese You'll just OD on that. And for me, if I have cheese in a block, I'm good. Right. Like, I know how to control that. I cut off one piece. But when it's like a slice, I'm never eating one slice. It's multiple slices at 100 calories per slice. And I'm doing it throughout the days. Like, those are definitely, like, something that I have to watch myself when I have them. But I figure, oh, this is easy for burgers and things like that. I did realize that I was doing that, so I have a dehydrator, which we just recently got. We got the Excalibur dehydrator. It's super fun. I'll leave a link for it down below, the one that I got. But we've been doing a lot of jerky, and we've got a recipe coming out for a beef jerky that we've come up with for keto. So tasty. And you can use ground beef. You don't have to go buy top round. I've got one for the top round and stuff too, but I'm going to give you one that you can just make with ground beef and you don't have to have a dehydrator. It's better with a dehydrator, but you can do it without one. But in recognizing that I've been grazing a lot more, I figured what better to graze with than just beef jerky. If I'm gonna graze, I mean, which is not good. Stay meat. Let me stay meat instead of all of the keto treats with the erythritol or the cheeses and all that extra dairy and everything else. Well, one side effect of all of this health scare is we can control our schedule of eating and what we eat. Now more than ever, we don't have to be tempted by fast food options and you know grab and go snacks. We have time to be able to prepare our food or lunches at home. Right. And I think that's a good thing. And while your your venue for where you're working may have changed, your home kitchen has not. So let's lean on the fact that we can go to our kitchen, we can prepare our lunches, pack your lunches, meal prep them just like you would and have a time of day that you're going to eat them and be in control of what you're eating and when you're eating. Cause there's no sense in having, you know, our work be out of control, our schedule and other things be out of control and then also have our food out of control. It can That's be right. the one stable in our life and also the interactions that we have with one another and having that keto community. Now's not the time to isolate yourself from your keto fam. Right. Now's the time for us to lean on one another. Lean, lean in on everybody. And like again, our Facebook group, awesome people in there. Lean in there. If you're struggling with something, if if you're like, hey, I'm about to binge, go in there. There's always somebody in there that can talk you through it. Absolutely. It's also a good time that you can even experiment with maybe some new recipes. Find some different keto dishes. Hey, I went to Costco and I found something that we have never had before and I was super excited and actually really tasty and we got duck bacon. 
Which was weird because I thought it would taste so much different than pork bacon, but it right. doesn't, honestly. And I mean, it cooked up nice. It didn't shrink a lot. I felt fancy. But it was really good and it wasn't it. super expensive. Now, I do recommend when you're experimenting to re with recipes, experiment with entrees and savory food. You know, yes. sometimes you're home, you want to make big batches of every single type of keto dessert there are. I would probably advise against that right now. Yeah, and it's the same thing that we were just talking about. I would experiment with like, yeah, entrees, meat dishes, things like that. Things where if you are going to overindulge, it's not gonna affect you nearly as much as making a batch of keto cookies or keto brownies or you know even keto breads or mug cakes or things like, things where it's gonna send your total carbs through the roof. Right. So I've got something else I wanted to try. Yes. Um, these actually came from a friend of ours. These are energy drinks and uh, it says this is the Summit flavor. And these I believe are actually the Amway energy drinks. Which is neat and we're not associated with Amway. No, nope. a friend of ours uh, sent them to us and said, hey, you know, you wanna try them? So we yeah. figured why not? So the ingredients in these are carbonated water, taurine, L-glutamine, citric acid, caffeine, uh, Acesulfine potassium, eh. uh, sodium eh. benzate, potassium sorbate, sucralose, uh, niacinamide, calcium D, I'm sure I'm pronouncing half of these wrong, pantheronate, uh, pyridoxine hydrochloride, natural flavors, panax ginseng root extractive, American ginseng root extractive, uh, cyanoblamin, and beta carotene for color. The, uh, the acesulfine potassium is something that's in a lot of the diet sodas. Mm -hmm. I have it once in a while, but it is known to um, in increase insulin a little bit. Not glucose, oh. insulin. Oh, all right. So it's just something to consider that you may be spiking insulin a little bit but when you're a, drinking this or any diet soda that has that in there. It's a no calorie, no carb thing. Yeah, though, so right? calories are 10 calories, zero grams of fat, zero grams of protein, zero total carbohydrates. Okay. So the calories are probably some of the extra, just like herbs and things like that and that. So, um, oh, do you want one? Yeah, take a seat. I got a grape for you. No, wait, what? Yeah, I'm, this is Summit flavor, which there I'm assuming so is Mountain Dew. There was so many flavors and you grabbed, oh wait, it says it's wild, wild berry. berry. <laughs> I thought it was grape, that was very deceiving. Ooh, that's good. That's good, this tastes like Mountain Dew. Whoa. Or ginger ale, maybe even a little bit of ginger ale. That is, wait. Mmm. That is very berry. Ooh, I like that one better. You can have that one. That is good. We'll see how much energy this gives us by the end of this. <laughs> so if you're interested in these, I don't this even know how like... much they cost. If I can find out, I'll put it across the screen, but I'll leave a link for them down below. Again, they were sent to us. This is uh, like they're from Amway though. Diet Mountain Dew. It does. Yeah. It's like a cross between Mountain Dew and ginger ale. Did you say we'll put the link below? Yeah, I'll put the link below for them. This so. is good. Anything else? What did we eat this week? Lots of burgers. We did eat lots of burgers. We had, um, and duck bacon and corned beef and cabbage. Corned beef and cabbage. But I didn't eat all my cabbage because we've been in social isolation and yeah, I didn't want you to be trapped with my gas. I did buy three corned beefs because I had gone to Aldi's and Aldi's had all of their corned beefs at $6 off. The funny part was that they were $6 off the day of St. Patrick's Day, which is usually they go on sale the next day, but they had them $6 off that day. So I got three of them. And I had also found the Aldi's version of Zevia. If you which have not seen delicious. that video, we reviewed it. I'm gonna leave a link over Rachel's head. Except for ginger ale. Actually, I had another can. I don't know if we had a bad can because I had another can and it tasted very different. So maybe we had a bad can. That's possible. Maybe we had a bad, we we're mixing bad them all. To, maybe mixing all the flavors together kind of threw it off a little no. bit. But I did have another can and I thought it tasted better. But it was, I think Joe, one of our subscribers actually put down that he had the, he, he feels like it is heavier on lemon lime and not as much ginger, which is why it seems off. Because some people, by the way, you know, if you don't have ginger ale, but you want that ginger ale flavor, you can actually create that flavor by mixing Sprite and Coke together. So you can mix cola and a lemon lime together and you'll get a ginger ale flavor. That is wild. 
<laughs> that seems reckless. So considering there's no actual ginger in that, it could be like what it is. It's heavier on the lemon lime than the, the cola flavor. How interesting. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, we found that. So we had the corned beef. We also had wings for three days because on Tuesday, after I made the corned beef and cabbage, Rachel sends me a thing and she's like, hey, they're having the buy one, get one free wings at Buffalo Wild Wings. You don't wings, have to eat it in the and store. And you don't have to eat in the store. As a matter of fact, the store is closed. It's only takeout. So she's like, can I have wings? I'm like, but I just made corned beef and the cabbage. And she's like, but I want wings. Happy wife, happy life. So we did, they, they've changed over. We just did that video about Buffalo Wild Wings and the different sizes. And of course, right after we released that video, they changed it where they don't have uh, snack size, small, medium, large. Now it goes by numbers, by wing count. And if you haven't seen the video for Buffalo Wild Wings, I'll leave that over Rachel's head. That was really good because some of the stuff that's in there is kind of surprising. So we ended up getting the wings. We got a 30 count and a 20 count, but I had enough Blazing Rewards points. We talked about it on our live stream so that I could get everything for free. So we did a buy one, get one free with the 30 count. I used my Blazing Rewards, so that was 60 wings for free. It's like a Buffalo Wings haul. And then I did a 20 count, buy one, get one free, use my Blazing Rewards. So we got 100 wings for free, and then we just, every day, we're putting some in the air fryer, and we ate wings for three days. It was, it was delicious. awesome. I'm a wings girl, man. I could eat chicken wings all the time. Flats are my favorite, though. You like flats. flats. I like them both. Um, I kind of like flats more just because I, I like being able to take them apart and they're easier for dipping. I don't know. The skin always stays a little bit more crispy on a flat. The thing about what it is is with which one, let us know down in the comment section. Are you a flats person or are you a drumettes person? The thing about the drumettes, I like the drumettes if they're smaller, but when you get those big, thick, heavy, meaty ones, I don't know, they're too juicy inside, and I like my wings kind of crispy. Yes. I don't want them like where, almost like the inside, if you get them too big, they're undercooked a little bit, right? Because they're cooking most of them based on the smaller size. Yeah, that's true. So this was a good week when it came to food. Everything was nice and tasty, and we do have lots of eggs. We have a bacon that's getting ready to go in the smoker. Yes. We've got a bunch of ground beef because we'd gone into Sam's Club, and they had the tubes of ground beef. And it's not grass fed, Cube. but it was the 10 pound packages in the fresh meat section. Looked like something they should be selling at Home Depot. It, it was a log. It's like and a it, two by four. But it was $2 a pound. So I bought 20 pounds of that just because we go through a lot of ground beef. I mean, Rachel and I eat close to a pound a day each when we're having ground beef. And the boys eat a lot. And the, the boys eat a lot. And we want to make sure we have ground beef. Ground beef is definitely a staple in our house. Very much so. Let us know down in the comment section what is like the staple meat. What is your go-to keto meal? For us, it's eggs and burgers. We probably have that at least least three to four days a week. I could eat that all the time. I love it. Eggs, bacon, eggs, then we have some bacon mm -hmm. on top of a burger, maybe a little bit of avocado once in a while. Yeah, guacamole on my side is my favorite. And our new thing is we're making our own buns, but what I'm doing is because we use the Blackstone, which I have behind me, we're not even cooking in the house anymore. You have to learn how to use the Blackstone. You, the cleaning gets so Why? much easier. Why would I want to learn when you're doing all the cooking out because there? Because for the days that you're cooking burgers for Kayla. Learn to another chore. I'm teaching you how to make less chores for you because if you use the Blackstone, then you don't have to clean a pot inside. You don't have the grease from the burgers that are splattering on top of the stove. I you think just we do it all out here. Should take out the middleman and just teach Caleb. That's a good idea. I think we should definitely do that. Anyway, so my new thing is to take some cheese, like a half ounce to an ounce of cheese each, and we're putting it on the griddle and crisping it up, almost making like one of those folios so cheese wraps. So good. You know, so. A long time ago, I did a thing on how to make your own folios cheese wraps. If you haven't seen that, I'll leave it over Rachel's head, a link for that. But basically, you melt it in the microwave and it turns the folio. But if you keep going or take that and put it in a pan, you can make like a crispy like tortilla Crisp. shell. Yes. So what I do is I'm taking, again, half ounce, three quarters of an ounce of cheese. You spread it out on the griddle or even in a frying pan and you let it melt and then it'll start to crisp up kind of like a pancake. Then you flip it over and crisp the other side and we're using that as a carrier, like a top and bottom for a burger. But it also makes a fantastic, like quick pizza, quick tostada, 
Like, it's just really versatile. Yeah, we did it with mozzarella cheese on the griddle. Again, we did like a big thing of just mozzarella cheese. And then once sauce. it was done, stuck it in the oven with a little bit of tomato sauce. And oh, I had had a pound of the pork sausage. Yes. And so I just cooked up the entire pound and covered the top of this mozzarella cheese thing and that was one of our meals. Delicious. It was really, really good. So we've been having a lot of fun with it despite having been stuck at home and everything else. I do you want to say, you know, again, make sure you're protecting yourself, but don't get panicky about this. I think people are just a little bit too panicked about some of this stuff. Yeah. You want to do comments and questions? Yes, please. Okay, so we usually do have a subscriber of the week, but... We don't have one this we week. We don't have a subscriber of the week this week. Nobody put their story in our Facebook group. Uh, so again, we mentioned before, but if, if you're new to our channel, go sign up for our Facebook family group. We do ask you guys, share your stories. Put up some before and after pictures, things like that. Let other people know the success you've had because your story is going to impact somebody. There is somebody else out there right now that is going through the same thing that you already went through or that you're going through. And when they see that somebody else has it, they're like, hey, they did it, I can do this. Well, and there's some people that are home from the first time in a long time and they're like, hey, is this the time where I'm gonna go ahead and go through that keto flu and start my keto journey? I've, I've heard that this is the time to do it. That's right. And so you want them to be successful in them trying this, you yeah. know? Since everybody is stuck at home right now, now is the best time to start keto because we always say, step one, pick a time to do it where you don't have to like rush to work or you don't have a whole lot going on in your mind because you want to be able to kind of chill out and what better way to chill out and like start keto than when you're in the middle of something we're calling social distancing. Exactly. So uh, we don't have a subscriber of the week, but again, like we were talking about, you, if you don't have our Facebook family group, you can also send us an email at stories at Two Crazy Ketos and we can share it that way. Yeah. We do have one update though, and from one of our longtime subscribers, and it was Vivid J. Vivid and he Jay. just kind of put up some progress pictures, and I'm so proud of him because he's done so awesome. Amazing. So I'm gonna put his pictures up right now of where he was to where he is now. He uh, loves to put up little comedy things on our YouTube channels, he's on such our a Facebook group. So make sure you go. And he also does a lot of videos and stuff of him singing and stuff. So make sure you go Beautiful and subscribe Beautiful white, very him. talented musician. Yeah, so that's his before and after pictures right now. You're looking great, Viva J. So you ready? Yeah. So I pulled some stuff because there weren't a lot of comments on last week's Keto on the Couch. So I Makes also pulled so a couple of things from our Facebook. Okay. And Renee just had something hey, that Renee. made me laugh. And so she put this graphic up on our Facebook family group and it just made me laugh so I wanted to share it in case you didn't see it. And it says, if things get real bad and you have to resort to cannibalism, remember, vegans first. They're the closest thing to grass fed. Oh my <laughs> gosh, that is awesome. So thank you for making me laugh this week, Renee. It definitely helped. Everybody that has shared some levity in this situation and my, my message though too is don't get offended. Yeah. People are going to put up memes that may be like borderline offending to people or something. They're just, you know, trying to be funny. Let's just keep a good perspective and believe the best that yes. no one is out there to just hurt your feelings. Let's just laugh. And, and the thing laugh. is, is sometimes, you know, it doesn't come through right on a text or yeah. on a post or things like can't that. Can't control tone. And I've had lots of times where I've started posting something and Rachel will look at me and be like, you can't say that. And I'm like, but it's a joke. And she's like, but nobody's going to read it as a joke. So I know even I make that mistake sometimes. So. And please know that, like, if you see something like you think is a little off from us, know that our motivation is always to be uplifting and to encourage and well, give you a laugh. We even had that the other day. So we put up the video on 10 things that we hate about keto. It was meant to bring a little bit of levity to the situation. Right. It was not meant to be a clickbait. I, don't, I still don't think it was clickbait because to me, clickbait is... I'm going to say something in the title and the video is nothing about that. Those are genuine things that we don't like about keto. Well, and some people, some responses we got were that they were just mad that we would even put that in people's mind that there's anything wrong with keto. And yeah, if that came across, we're, we're sorry and, about that. And it's that. not how we meant it to be. It was just bringing you know a little bit of levity to 
this whole situation and be kind of funny, like Rachel saying, like, hey, I hate the fact that I can't use Joe's snoring as an excuse anymore. Because I want to watch my shows. Or the fact that, like, I get to go buy more clothes now and things like that. So it was meant to be a little funny. Some of them were absolutely serious. Like, it is a pain to have to explain to your to people, like, why you buy so many eggs or bacon or things like that. Right? I mean, we went to the grocery store yesterday. I had coupons for Vital Farms eggs. So they finally had some eggs. So I said to Rachel, hey, let's get some eggs. Let's use up the coupons. And they have a, a thing of, it's limit of one per family. One dozen per family. I'm like, we eat a dozen eggs a day. Now you're telling us social distancing, don't go to the store. But now we have to go to the grocery store every, day. every single day. Because I eat a dozen eggs a day. So, you know, we're trying to have some fun with the thing. I mean, yeah. Okay, so let's get into some comments. So Avalon wrote, hey, Avalon. I heard the following quote, ask somebody if they only got one car in their entire lifetime, would it not take awesome care of it? Most people would answer yes. But when you ask them to do a little work to take care of their bodies, which they only have one of, they don't have time. Yeah, this is not a dress rehearsal. Yeah. You get one, one shot. Yeah, and it is amazing. People don't want to take the time to take care of themselves or they don't take care of themselves. But yeah, they take care of their cars. I mean, it's kind of like this whole thing that we're going through right now. Everybody is worried about this virus. And I understand you know, hey, it's spread pretty quickly because it does live on surfaces a little bit, but we're still not focusing and still nobody is talking about all of the other things that kill a lot more people. Like nobody's talking about diabetes. Nobody's talking about the fact that 674,000 Americans die every year from heart disease. That is a phenomenally high number. I mean, think about that number. 674,000 people. But we're talking about a virus. And that is in one country. That's just Globally, in one country. Heart disease is probably taking out way more than that. So while you're in your middle of your social isolation and stuff, make sure you're staying keto because long after this virus goes away and all of these things and, and you know people worrying about this, we're still gonna have to worry about our diabetes, our heart disease, all of the other illnesses that come from you know, like the types of foods that we eat. And now is an awesome time to start flexing your meal preparation muscles, right? Yep. You're not going to build, you know, meal prep muscles without just practicing it. And now you have some time, you're home. Let's start getting used to that being a part of our life. And then when we get back to normal and people go back to their workplaces, they'll, you know, have practice prioritizing what they eat and you know what they put together for a day yeah so christopher wrote hey christopher are walmart eggs always completely bland and flavorless or did i just get a bad carton i typically eat happy eggs i sometimes eat kroger or aldi for cheaper eggs but i got walmart eggs this past time and even cooked with redmond's and in bacon grease and Kerrygold butter there was no taste and almost no color there no you did not get a bad batch you didn't get a bad batch that's and how it's it not is. just walmart eggs it's like all, all of those 79 89 cent a dozen ones they're just when you're so used to Vital Flavorful. Farms, like farm fresh eggs or happy eggs with those brilliantly gold yolks and they're full of flavor and the richness. When you get back to those other eggs. They're like anemic. It, yeah. I mean, Rachel brought home some. She was like, I wasn't sure how many eggs we have and eggs are always sold out down here. So she's like, I brought home like two dozen eggs from Walmart. And I'm like, yeah, those are like last resort. If I have to run out of dog food or something, I'll feed them to the dog and we'll eat them like if we run out of all of the other eggs because they just don't taste as good as the other eggs. They I'm really spoiled. I, I'm, I'm just spoiled. Pat wrote. Hey, Pat. I have a video request. I'm not familiar with working with liver. Would you please do a video or even explain how you mix liver in with the burger so Rachel doesn't realize it's there? Dumb it way down so even Pat can make it. Oh, how cute. <laughs> um, it's pretty simple. What I do is I take uh, just a little bit of liver. You don't need a lot, like maybe you know one to three ounces of liver. Like a lot. I chop it up super fine, or you could run it through a meat grinder, and then I mix it in with ground beef and I either make burgers with it or uh, I make like, you know, just loose ground beef, like a taco meat and put in the seasoning and stuff. Mix a little cream cheese. But when, yeah, cream cheese. When you figure you've got 16 ounces of ground beef, when you're adding one to three or four ounces of liver and the spices and the salt, you're not gonna taste that liver. It's when you just have the liver itself. Oof. 
Cynthia wrote. Hey, Cynthia. Joe and Rachel, would you consider a three-day challenge of keto eating without refrigeration or electricity? Oh, wow. That's an interesting challenge. Could I do three days of keto eating with no refrigeration or electricity? Do you like keto camping? I could definitely do the eating part with no electricity. Do you want us to do it like we can't have electricity at all? Because that won't happen because Rachel would kill me within 24 hours if she had to live without air conditioning unless we literally had no electricity. No, I think that she means that you would just not have to, you know, cook it on a stove and... I think we should do it the other way. I think we should do 72 hours, no electricity in the house at all. No, you're crazy. Why not? No, <laughs> we're not doing that. We'll do the food thing, though. We can do the food thing. We'll work on that. Brianna wrote... Hey, Brianna. When my two youngest kids were toddlers, they got a hold of a big bag of Jolly Rancher candies. They were in their car seats in the third row of our Suburban, and they pulled out the bag of the groceries. I had no idea until a week later when on a hot day, my car started smelling like burnt sugar. Oh, no. My husband looked, and it looked, but could not find any mechanical problems. Every time we drove on a hot day, the burnt sugar smell was overwhelming. Finally, I figured out they had licked it and spit out 30 pieces of candy, all in the spots where the seats were bolted to the floor. Are you sure that we don't have their children? Because that <laughs> seems like something our boys would do. I have cleaned our cars, like, when we would get ready to sell them or trade them in. And, yeah, what you find under the seats, especially when we used to have the minivans, It's right? not a treasure hunt. You start folding up the seats, and you're like, ooh, look at this. Even, like, your car. So we gave... Rachel's car, we sold Rachel's car to Anthony. And so I had seat covers on it and I wanted to clean up the car. So I pulled the seat covers off so that we could wash them. And to pull the seat covers off, I actually had to remove the, the seat on the back. And yeah, what was shoved down below there? It's there I ugly. found this wasn't even kid stuff because our kids have been older. I found melted crayons from like crafts from church. Awesome. Coins. Different types of things that just fall down there. Food. Lots of All kinds of stuff that finds in there in the car. Where it found something like sweet or sticky and then, yeah, fuzz. Yeah. Lots of fuzz. Terry wrote. Hey, Terry. This was great as many obstacles are now being put in our way right now. Maybe that's why I saw a picture with a guy at Whole Foods cart full of nothing but eggs overflowing. The milk carts are funny because who can drink 20 gallons of milk? I have to try the Aldi's brands of Zevia, especially now that it's opened up so close to me. Yeah, maybe I could do 20 gallons of heavy whipping cream if you whipped them into, like, whipped cream. But, like, straight milk? Yeah. I don't understand people buying 20 gallons of milk. And I have seen that. It's very difficult to find milk gonna near us. It's going to go bad. It's going to go bad. Now, some of them, like, I just bought some today of the Ultra Milk, but that's so that I could make yogurt. some yogurt. And I think the best by date is like May 1st or something like that. So I'm like, okay, that'll last, you know, a couple weeks until I can get to the next batch of yogurt. But yeah, I've seen people buying like six, seven, eight gallons of milk. And I don't understand that. The eggs, again, eggs are good for 60 days from when they put them in the carton. And a lot of stores are limiting. But like I said, we eat a dozen a day. So us buying they eight or nine dozen eggs, that's our normal grocery haul. Whenever they go on sale, I buy a minimum of 10 dozen eggs. Do you see my longest straw in the world? That's the straw for my big giant cup for the car. I love it. I love metal straws. <laughs> Keeps everything so cold. Stephanie wrote. Hey, Stephanie. Social distancing is allowing me to binge watch some of my favorites like you two. The two of you never fail to leave me feeling inspired. I appreciate you so much. Your positive energy through any situation reflects the beautiful spiritual strength that you both possess. Oh my goodness. Thank you, thank you. Please have a wonderful and less stressful week. God bless. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Katie wrote. Hey, Katie. I'm glad you all survived your week. Prayers for the health of this 2KK family. Hugs to all. Thank you. We need that. Everybody needs that right now. Boomer wrote. Hey, Boomer. I'm sending my prayers and best wishes to all who are being affected by this virus, both di directly and indirectly. Please be kind and patient with other people. You have no idea what they are dealing with right now. God bless you all. So true. I will have to say, though, that I have noticed when we have been in stores, people are just a little bit sweeter, right? Feels like all of a sudden we're in Christmas time. People are like, no, you go first. And, and I don't think it's just that it's like, you go first because I don't want you to touch me. I think it's just that people are more conscious of, you know, the human beings around them and that they are precious, right? I have to try to get a picture of this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. The bird 
is going sleeping. Night, going night night. He's sleeping. He's got his head. Oh, he just opened his eye. But yeah. He's got his head tucked in like he's sleeping in the middle of the well, day. And this one's always and sleeping. And this one's out down here, too. So, yeah. So, I think it's funny that in the stores, everybody's being so friendly. And I'm seeing people like, yeah, whatever you need. Why is it taking, like, a tragedy and a social epidemic to be nice to people? Well, I'm just hoping that we'll get a lot of practice in, and then when things go back to normal, we maintain that. Yeah. There's something to bring out of this and caring for one another and looking out for one another and trying to be, you know, neighborly and conscious of our community. Let's let's take that into the next season, yeah. right? Danielle wrote. Hey, Danielle. I'm not sure if it's true, but I was told that Disney is actually paying their employees while they're off. Wow, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I did hear that. I do believe it's true, and I'm seeing a lot of businesses, at least the larger companies, are doing that, and I'm glad to see that because I am really worried about a lot of people. Yeah. You know, like we said, you know, even our income is down about 50% right now, but... You know, I noticed that Best Buy put out a thing that anybody who is working right now at Best Buy, if they're on a voluntary basis, their hourly employees are being given a temporary raise if they are working. Wow. And they're paying people who are having to stay home for their kids and stuff like that. They're paying them anyway. Wow. So it's nice to see some of these larger corporations and companies stepping up saying, hey, we know we're in the middle of a social crisis right now and like we're going to do whatever we can do to help. We love you, America. Yes. Anne wrote. Hey, Anne. I'm trying to use these days of isolation to catch up on your videos. I got so behind when we traveled for two weeks that uh -huh. I'm barely caught up. The stress is causing me major problems as well as weight gain and bloating. I'm trying to remain calm. Our country is in lockdown, giving me plenty of time to focus on getting back on track. We love you too, and we hope you have a great week. Let's continue to put our faith in God. Wow, that is awesome. I'm actually really glad that, that they got to have a little bit of a vacation before they're kind of stuck in a staycation, right? Right. So um, I'd also like to know, what are some things that you guys enjoy doing on your staycation? Is Are, are you pitching a tent in the backyard and like tenting at home, maybe camping at home? Are you creating a fort in your living room? What are some things um, ideas that people have for enjoying their time at home. Yeah. So Keto on a Budget wrote, Hey, Keto on a Budget. I know I have a hard time seeing any progress when I look in the mirror and I'm terrible about taking pictures. As for the pandemic, I do Instacart deliveries and this week I'm taking off because I worked it last week and I was a madhouse and so stressful. I was doing carnivore and it made me want to eat all the things. Keto things, yes, but all the things. Wow. First of all, thank you so much for just continuing to serve in that capacity. For all of the grocery workers that are out there, I feel yeah. like just like first responders, you guys are almost first responders in this because you provide so much normalcy for, for families who are home, right? We all are still need to go to the grocery store and we still need to like get things for our household, even diapers and wipes and stuff for families are super important to just be able to have access to that. And you guys being willing to work is, is just amazing to me. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. And as far as the, you know, looking in the mirror and not seeing progress, I definitely know what you're going through. It's not an abnormal thing. I constantly look in the mirror and I'm like, I'm fat. Now the scale is up a couple pounds with all of the stress, but it's not up as much as what I see in myself. You know, it's up two or three pounds. But when I look in that mirror, and I've talked about this a lot of times, I still see the 280, 290 pound guy. I look at myself and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so heavy, I'm so fat. And it's not until I see myself like next to somebody, like usually in a picture. So this week we filmed the stuff for church, like we filmed pastor doing his message that was gonna come out this week. And Rachel and I and the boys were sitting on the stage. And if I can find a little snapshot of it, I'll put it up here on the screen. But there was one part where the camera scrolled past and it's me sitting next to Caleb. Yeah. And it was the first time that I've looked at myself or I've seen a picture of myself and I was like, wow. I really am thin because again, I'm always seeing myself as really heavy, but when I'm seeing myself next to Caleb, who I look at as thin, and in that picture, in that snapshot, you see, I look thinner than him. 
But I don't see that when I'm standing next to him in person or just right. in a mirror or when I'm just hanging out with him. Well, and my advice too would be take pictures of yourself and share them in our family group so that we can encourage you and tell yeah. you what we see. Because, yes. you know, a lot of times we're really hard on ourselves, but like you're not seeing what I'm seeing when I see you. When right. I see you, I see beauty. I see something that's happening forward momentum and maybe you know you just see where you've been but i see where you're going so that's sometimes right. we just need each other to be able to see you know the progress that we've made yeah so last one carmen wrote hey carmen that body image thing is so hard to deal with i wish i could look at myself and see what others seem to see i put up a goofy video profile picture today and my inbox got flooded with questions about why do i look so thin I keep my journey pretty quiet because I really do not see it usually. It makes me so disheartened sometimes. I still keto on though, no matter what. Well, don't get disheartened because you're doing awesome. And yeah, I mean, you're having forward momentum. Just don't be so hard on yourself. Yeah. Well, that is this week's Keto on the Couch. I do want to say we really do love you guys. We appreciate you guys. We, we appreciate you guys helping us continue to build this channel by sharing it, by, you know, hitting the like button, by subscribing to the channel and signing up for notifications. You know, in the midst of everything that's going on, we want to continue to be able to be there and encourage people on their journey and encourage people in life. Yeah, absolutely. So let us know through your comments, what are some other things that we can do to be a blessing in your life as, you know, you continue in this keto journey? We would love to, to know what's your video recommendations, like, you know, what more can we do to provide a service to you? Yeah. So please do us a favor and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. And until next week, bye. bye.